It's Katrina, and I have with me the answer to your prayers, Ariella Nix. How are you today? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Hanging in there. It's been a cra crazy 2020, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very crazy. Understand really here. <laughs> so, if you're coming to a show for a first time with somebody who's never seen you wrestle, this is the first time they'll see you in a wrestling ring. How would you describe your persona, your gimmick to somebody seeing you for the first time? Um, just very egotistical, powerful, full of herself, confident. Like, yeah, I'm the badass, you know, just this is my ring. This is my show. It's all about me. <laughs> I like that. I, I think I've seen you maybe three or four times. I think the first time I saw you was in a show at Jersey. And I was like, okay. Like, I like seeing women like women wrestlers because it's always just like, I like women who can hang with, like, the guys. So you could just, like, um, entertain to see somebody in the ring, especially when it's, you know, what you're not expecting. You're like, oh, my God, this is super dope. So I definitely agree that you do have this, like, persona where it's like you this is my house type of thing so i like that <laughs> what, <That's right. laughs> uh, what got you started into wrestling what was like the moment for you and you was like this is something i need to do um well actually i grew up watching it i grew up watching it with my dad from like four or five years old so i was always a fan and then maybe like about eight years ago i started really you know going to shows outside of wwe because i only uh -huh that growing up so like going to like my local indie shows and meeting wrestlers and getting to see like the smaller intimate setting that's really what like made me want to do it i'm like hmm this is kind of cool like i've always loved it uh -huh. like kind of getting that itch now <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, i think i got introduced to indie wrestling maybe two years ago or like one or two years ago and my friend who like house of glory is like 20 minutes away from where i live so she was like you know there's this place here that does wrestling and i'm like just wrestling and i didn't know about it and i live in this area for how long right. so i went for the first time and i was like oh this is really like dope it's just like there's, you know, obviously the crowd when you go to like a WWE show and it's like a different crowd, but when you go to like an indie show, it's such a homey like feel. Like you just, yeah. people seem so much more invested to want to yeah. see what's happening in the indie show than like you, people are on cell phones at like WWE or you're like too mm -hmm. busy, like let's Snapchat this. And I'm just like, but you're watching somebody wrestle and this should be like- Exactly, like, you're paying for it too, you know? <laughs> Exactly, but, so I feel like for indie shows you just get that like really home feel vibe like the wrestlers are just connected more to the audience so i think yeah. that's pretty dope what would you say is uh your favorite like i'm sure you've worked in a bunch of places what would you say is like some of your favorite places of promotions you worked for um well definitely my favorite is home my cre um, creator pro where i train now you mentioned hog before that's like my original home so uh -huh. i had a great times with them back in the day um I'm trying to think um there was a good place down in dc of course unfortunately right now that promotion is not going to be around anymore but um so there's been like a lot of different places i love traveling so that was like my big goal for this year but you know hopefully i'll get to see new places in 2021 <laughs> Yeah, I hope, you know, COVID has, I was just telling somebody, like, I had so many plans for this summer, and then right. COVID was like, you're okay, no, that's not going to happen, yeah. like, you just going to have to suck this up, and I've been so sad, because I went to a wrestling show in March, and I was like, mm -hmm. if I knew that was going to be my last show for a while, I would have just, like, been there probably, like, way longer than I love, I left early, like, oh, I'm tired, I got to get to bed, thinking, like, I can go to the show, like, two weeks, and then, that's when the quarantine happened. I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, well. it was crazy. Like my last time I wrestled was March 14th. It was literally like five months ago now. And I'm like, wow, you know, it's crazy. I never thought it was going to be this long. But, you know, I guess everything happens for a reason. I don't know. It's crazy. Just definitely unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. So would you say COVID has gotten you like where you like what is the word i want to use like more in tune with wanting to wrestle like did it like give you a breather to be like you know it's okay to take a little bit of a rest or was it something like you got anxious like oh i want to keep wrestling i want to keep grinding um i honestly needed the break like looking back because i you know i was fortunate enough to have shows every weekend i work a full-time job trying uh -huh. to get training was a pain just because you know i train in long island i live in the bronx i work in manhattan so uh -huh. trying to training on time was never an option just <laughs> 
traffic and everything else. So, and then, like I said, just working full time, wrestling full time, like I really needed the break. And, you know, it made me miss wrestling, of course. And, um, you know, it's like, I do miss it. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready to get back. And, you know, I got to get back into training soon. I definitely want to train a little bit before I start doing shows and stuff like that. Uh-huh. I went a couple of times and like, you know, still a little like paranoid with everything. So, you know, I don't want to overdo it, but you know, I am missing it a lot right now, but I did need the break at the same time just to kind of slow down because it was too much going on and, you know, it was a much needed break, but I didn't want it this to be long though. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, like it was nice to get like that. Okay. A month. Yeah. Sure. And now I'm like, all right, okay, like, can we not, like, <laughs> can something, yeah, exactly. I get it, I definitely understand it, because it's been, like, you know, it's a scary thing, but it's also just, like, I didn't expect this to be 2020, it's very, like, right. Everybody was like, you know, I had a good feeling about, play. I was like, 2020 is going to be my year, you know, and I feel like it's, I said in the beginning, I was like, 2020 is going to be good for good people and bad for bad people, so I've been kind of on point with that, because we see it, a lot of people going to explode, but that's another story. <laughs> But um, yeah, like I just, yeah, I don't, nobody saw this coming at all. Definitely. Who would you um say if you can compare yourself to any woman? I know some people don't like to compare themselves, but if mm-hmm. somebody was like, oh, you remind me of this wrestler or if somebody you kind of like can compare yourself to, who would you pick and why? Um, Well, one person that I want to be compared to, like that I feel like I try to emulate a little bit is Sensational Sherry. I always say that she's oh, a lover. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because you know, whoever she managed, whoever she worked with, like she was her own character, but she always reflected who she was with. And yeah. I try to keep like, especially when I was working mostly as a manager, like I wanted to be myself, but make sure I emulated who I was like managing at the time. So I try to keep that in mind, like, you know, make sure like be myself, yeah. but make sure I reflect the person I'm working with. So I hope I get compared to her. Um, I've gotten a lot of comparison to Sasha Banks, especially when we both had purple hair. Love her, so I take it as a compliment. I feel like it's an insult to her. <laughs> um, that was like that's always been like the biggest like comparison I've gotten in any way. But um, I would so I would definitely say sensational to just like her, like you know how she's able to like um, you know emulate anybody, whoever she's working with, no matter the oh. character, but still be herself at the same time. I like that answer. I love Sherry. She's like amazing. I tell people all the time, like she's so underrated. Like yes. <laughs> I don't people understand how dope she was, you know. Right. Oh my God. Michael, so that was just like such an amazing pair up. So definitely mm-hmm. love, I like to love that comparison. Would you say uh like for wrestling as far as like sacrifice and wasn't something you really had to sacrifice a lot? Was it just like it's not too bad? Because I've heard stories and people was like it's okay, but then some people really had to sacrifice a lot to live this dream. Would you feel that something mm-hmm. you had to sacrifice a lot in your life to wrestle um as of yet not really you know i mean sometimes i may miss like a friend's birthday or something like that but um i haven't been you know sacrificed too much but i think you know if i'm lucky enough to really make it on a big stage that's where the real sacrifices like you see like the guys like in wwe and AEW yeah. are on the road and all of this so it's you know they're the ones that i think are sacrificing a lot more like i've been fortunate enough that i haven't had to sacrifice too much yet you know, but hopefully the career grows and we'll see from there. Okay. Okay. I like that answer. If you could uh, pick like your dream tag team partner from any promotion or your dream stable, like this is my stable, we run shit. Who would you put in your tag team? Who would you put in your stable? Um, my t- my dream tag team partner, honestly, would be Aaron Stevens, just because I love that man to death. And like, I've loved him since before I started getting to wrestle. Like, I uh-huh. want him one day, if not tag team, like a manager to him or something like that. Um, stable, that's hard. And that's, you know, it's funny. I've always wanted my own stable. Like, uh-huh. um, when Paul Heyman had his Dangerous Alliance and it was like based around, I've always wanted that, but I don't know who I would want in it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the best of the best of course <laughs> <laughs> and who would you say is like your biggest idol like wrestling like you know for me Shawn Michaels was the guy that introduced me but then when I saw the Hardy especially Jeff Hardy I got obsessive with wrestling like okay now I have to watch like everything they're on I need to watch it I need to like, record it on VHS which VHS back then so like who is that person that was just like ah oh, this is like oh my god this person is like so amazing Shawn Michaels, yeah. <laughs> and, and I had my obsession with Jeff Hardy too at one point, but like Shawn Michaels is like the overall, like he's the one that got me into wrestling. Love him to this day. This, to me, he's always going to be the GOAT. Nobody's better than him. Sorry. But <laughs> Great. Like Shawn Michaels is like my all time. 
you know, inspiration wrestling wise. Yeah, I definitely uh, was telling people that like people can make. I was like, no, nobody's trying my clothes. We're not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> let's still be respectful now. <laughs> like, <laughs> amazing, like he was an amazing like entertainer, and he mm. didn't have to do like. Granted, he was very egotistical, and it worked, but. I'm just mm-hmm. like, I can't compare nobody to Sean Michaels. I'm sorry. And yep. then Jeff Hardy is like literally just everything. So <laughs> like, everything to me. Like I was, so I, right. I think every girl either loved Jeff or Matt at some point, you know, you just had to love one of them. It, <laughs> I started <laughs> off with Matt and like, I don't know, Jeff did like this really crazy thing off the ladder. And I was like, hmm, off, so we'll go to the next brother. And I felt bad about that. But I'm like, ever since then, I was like, no, nobody can do what Jeff does. I don't care. Like he gets me very stressed so out. <laughs> <laughs> he makes me very stressed when he does the crazy stuff. I'm like, wait, stop. You don't stop it. But then it's also like, oh, he's so amazing. So. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you say it's like, Um, I know I hear things sometimes about like how friendships may be hard to come by. Some people get lucky to get like that, so, that solid group of people. Who would you say are people you like really admire or respect that you like your close circle that has helped you either personally or in your wrestling career? Um... I've, you know, luckily to have met some great people, um, you know, just thinking off the top of my head and I'm probably going to miss people like Faye Jackson is one of my close, like I love her to death. Like, yeah. like we've gotten real close, you know, this past year. Um, Hawkeye, love his gifs, you know, and like me and him have bonded because like he rides with me a lot if we're both on the same show, we live near each other. So um, we've gotten real close. Um, my new friend is Russell Rowe. We're always texting each other. So like we've gotten close since March. So we were booked together and met for the first time. Uh-huh. Um, Theo Ivory is another one that me and him are always texting a lot. So those are like the few that recently, and I know, like I said, I'm missing people. And, you know, there's people that I've trained with, like some of my hot guys, I still talk to like Chris Eaton and, all, and Ken Broadway, who I used to manage. So like those guys, I'm like still close to my boys at Cap, like um, Kip Stevens is one of my closest friends too. So there's a lot, you know, I've been lucky. Like I, don't, I try not to have drama with people and, you know, and, you know, it's hard, but I've, I feel I've met some great people. And like I said, I know I'm forgetting people. I'm sorry. I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and what would you say, like, most question I wanted to ask with regards to there's been some say so like I believe you see some of your tweets about it but intergender wrestling seems to be a big thing and personally why I think it can be done very well if it's done correctly what are your thoughts on that like that's something you're okay with or something you want to see a lot of or it's something that needs to be done in like moderation um I love I love it personally I love wrestling guys um you know it's just, I understand why it's not for everybody and if it's not for you then you know that's totally fine. Like, you know, I respect, you know, people that just don't feel comfortable or they don't feel it's believable or whatever, you know, and like you said, it can, if it's done right, like it's a lot of fun. I've had a few intergender matches. I love working guys. I train with mostly guys. So it's somewhat of the same thing. And uh-huh. you know, I know it's like different arguments of like, oh, it's domestic abuse, it's this and that. And, you know, I don't necessarily agree with that. And I know some people, like the one argument I saw recently was like that women are being forced to do it. And that I don't agree with that at all. Like, you know, if you're going to wrestle a match, you should, um, you know, both parties should be okay with it before it happens. Not like, oh, just, I don't want to lose the booking. I'm scared, you know, and that sucks. Yeah. And that's a different, you know, issue that needs to be fixed in wrestling. But, you know, as long as both parties are cool, accept it, you know, I love it personally. So, Okay. I like that. And what would you say, like, the pros and cons of wrestling, like, for you? Like, is, like, the travel or is it, like, pretty, like, it's cool, like, I like everything, or is it, like, you feel like it's pretty even out for being a wrestler, doing that? Um, you know, I mean, some, like, and you mentioned traveling. I, you know, it's fun when you're traveling with your friends, but then sometimes when you have, like, a long road trip, and then, you know, if, like, somebody like me that works, like, full-time, and then it's, like, you know, you're traveling all weekend, and, you know, it takes up a lot of your time, and you can get tired from it and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, it's like, hard to say con. You know, I would say that would be, like, the main con. Like, you know, even though the traveling can be fun with when you're with people. Yeah. You know, it can be long sometimes, you know, being in a car for how many hours and stuff like that just to do like a 10 minute match or something. You know, it's all worth it in the end. But, um, you know, I mean, if you love it, you know, it's it's great. So I don't know. I don't it's hard to say, like, really any cons, but, you know. Okay, And so this is like a two part question. So who would you say is your favorite match of all time from any wrestler from anywhere? And what is one of your favorite matches you have worked personally? Um, my favorite all-time match, um, is definitely Sean versus Brett, the Iron Man match, definitely one of my tops, um, 
you know, it was just great. You can't even put it, you know, it was, like, you know, they both are just so good. So um, one of my personal favorites, um, I'm always so critical of myself. Like every time I'm just like, oh, I suck so much. But, um, you know, I love the matches I've had with Faye. Um, I love the match that I had with Effie and um, Nick Iggy, speaking of intergender wrestling. Um, really like the match I had with Savannah Stone. Um, like the matches I had with Chris Statlander. So those would be a few. You know, like I said, I'm just too critical of myself. I'm like, I hate it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I um, totally understand that. That's how I am mm. with my writing. Like, I'm a writer. So, like, mm. I'll be like, I'm good with it. And then it goes out and I'm like, wait a minute. Right. Uh, did I, I mess it. it's like, it's You know, you want things like, to Constantly, yeah. like, is this like the best? Like, it's always that, like, but I could have maybe did this a little better. So, I totally mm -hmm. understand that. Mm -hmm. So, I like a good gimmick match. Like, one of my favorites, a lot of matches, obviously, because of Jeff Hardy. So, <laughs> what is your favorite gimmick match if you like them? And what is your least favorite gimmick match and why? Hmm, that's interesting. Um, I don't know. I like, oh, excuse me. Um, I like matter matches too in a steel cage, I would say, probably one of my favorites. Um, least favorite i don't know if i really have one i'm very squeamish so i don't like a lot of blood and stuff so if it gets like too like deathmatch you know i'm all for deathmatch if you like it but me i just get too squeamish i'm like oh, i don't want to see too much blood <laughs> <It's like that. laughs> but um so i guess if i had to choose a least favorite just only that just because like i said i'm squeamish not that it isn't good wrestling but you know I'm just okay <laughs> no, I, I definitely have to see those in moderation i can't like do a bunch of yeah things get too stressed out and i'm like okay so y'all good like right. turned, like is this person all right even though i know it's yeah, give them so much credit for doing like those matches constantly like more power to you guys man you know yeah i'm, I'm way too strong like, I, I could do like, nobody sees the other and not because i'm be like okay listen can we not like mm -hmm. <laughs> can we chill a bit like i'm gonna be too stressed out about that. i just can't um I think one of the best parts of wrestlers as everyday gimmick is their finisher. Like what is the finisher that makes you stand out from everybody else? So what is your finisher and what, how did that come about to be your finisher? Um, well, my finisher is the rude awakening, basically like a variation from Rick Rude's like a reverse stunner. So it's not something you really see often, like in the Indies, I haven't seen it in a while. So, you know, it's different. It's me and, you know, just gotta tear, you know, like a lot of my offense is like neck base, you know, I did the rolling elbow, work the neck a lot. So, you know, work the neck and then just destroy it at the end. <laughs> okay, and that was like the reasoning behind the finisher. Was it just like, okay, because it kind of works with my offense. So it was just like, okay, this is super dope. A little bit of both. Yeah, and just something that I don't see often. So just, you know, the mix because you don't want to, like, you know, everybody does the same thing and stuff like that. So I wanted something that's a little bit different. Uh -huh. you know, so, and, you know, they like say it works the neck. It's, you know, and it's dope, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What what are your thoughts? Like, there's been, like, a lot of craziness going on in wrestling, especially in 2020, uh, with all the things that's been coming up, but also with just, more the fact that we have AEW now and that there's more, I guess, main competition. Because I don't want to say there's not. There's we still have like MLW. There's still Ring of Honor. So in New Japan, so they exist. But the fact that we now have like all these options and it's still people who are like, well, you can kind of tweak this or we can kind of fix that. So what is your thoughts on like the current state of wrestling, even with the whole like everything that kind of came out a couple of months ago, a month or so ago, where I was just like, oh my god, really like that type of thing. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. about? like just the current state of wrestling and what do you think can be done to make it better? Um, Like I love it just because like you said, there's so many options. So like, if you don't like this, you can watch that. You know, I feel like there's a certain type for everybody now. There's a lot of options, you know, it's a lot of places for people to work, which is nice for wrestlers. So there's an opportunity to get a yeah. chance. Um, You know, I know like you're, I guess you talk about like the speaking out stuff. So that, you know, it's, you know, it's been around for a while. It's been well known, but I'm glad it's getting the exposure that it needs because it yeah. does the change. And, you know, I just hope now that because it's so out there and it's, you know, like you can't fake it anymore. You can't just like, oh, we didn't hear that, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I just hope that these promotions make the changes that are needed, you know, just to protect the talent, the men and the women. It happens to everybody, protect the yeah. fans. Like my story, I was a fan when I, you know, and I wasn't at a show, but um you know it just happens and you know i just hope people learn from it and like realize oh this you know these actions are not okay and that was i think the biggest problem like you know the boys are okay with it so it's yeah. like 
can do what I want because there was no repercussions. So I hope now just because it's beco become so more exposed that people realize it's not okay. And like I said, just, you know, putting these practices to help protect everybody. Okay, like that answer. Mm -hmm. And is there a promotion you would like to work for that you haven't worked for yet? Is there like a bucket list place you're just like, oh, I need to work at this place at some point in my career? Um, a few, I would say like beyond in the women's wrestling revolution, that's one goal. Um, trying to think shimmer is another goal, like just like a lot of the, I just really want to travel. Like that's, I don't, I can't have, I don't say a lot of promotions in my head, but just places like I want to wrestle in Cali, Chicago, UK, Texas, you know, the big places. Yeah. So I have more locations in mind, but you know, those would definitely be a few that would be a goal of mine at some point. What would your, like, if somebody wanted to, like, come to you and be like, you know, Ariella, I want to wrestle. I want to kind of get my foot in the door. What would you tell somebody who's just, like, just starting out and they came to you for advice? Um, first thing, definitely find a good school because that definitely helps a lot. You don't want to go to a place where they don't know what they're doing and, you know, putting, like, students at risk where you could get hurt or, you know, something like that. Um, so once you find a good place that you could train, um, it's going to be tough. You know, it's not easy. Like, you know, you watch it on TV, you see everybody do everything. You're like, oh, that's, you know, it makes, they make it look so easy and it's not. And, you know, just don't give up and, you know, don't be afraid to speak up because that's like a lot of these issues. Like we were talking about the speaking out before, you know, people are afraid to speak out for whatever, you know, worried about like losing a booking or, you know, getting blackball, things like that. And um, so, yeah, don't be afraid to like stand up for yourself when you need to. It's a tough business and, you know, you got to be tough too. And, you know, there are people that are there to want to help you. And of course there are others that don't. So, you yeah. know, you keep your eyes open, you know, you be cordial to everybody, just, you know, watch, you know, it's sad, but, you know, some people you got to watch, some will actually be your friend and want to help you. So, you know, stick with those people and, you know, just got to, you got to really tough it out. It's not easy. Okay. Okay. Is there like any dream match for you? Like you're like, oh, I want to work with this person. This can be anybody from any promotion that you just see yourself like, oh, I can work with this person and we can have like a really dope match. Um, I always say my ultimate, ultimate dream opponent is Daniel uh -huh. Bryan That's because he's the man. Um, another, you know, like again, WWE uh -huh. is a lot harder. Like Charlotte's a dream opponent. Candice LeRae is another, like watching her, like when, before I even started and getting to like, meet her and stuff. She's such a sweetheart. She's so good. And I'm sad I didn't get a chance to work her before she got signed. So I'm like, hmm. But <laughs> like, she deserves the world. Um, non WWE, I guess, uh, one would I always say Jordan Grace because I was supposed to wrestle her about two years ago and the show got canceled and never had a chance to get that match. So she's always going to be on the top of my list until that happens. Um, Kylie Ray is another one. Like, she's blowing up. She's so good. Um, Big Spoon is another one. She's so good, too. There's so many. It's like, I can just name, like, everybody. Those <laughs> 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 like, are, like, the top six, you know, at least first that come to mind. There's, like I said, there's so many more, but, you know. Okay. And if you wasn't wrestling and you had a different dream job, what would that job be? Like, this would be, like, the number two spot if you was not wrestling. Um. I would definitely be working in TV. That's what I studied in college. That's what I actually wanted to do. Like um, learning how to be a producer now, like that. So something behind the scenes, getting TV on. Even, I really wanted to be a producer for WWE. That's what made me study um, broadcasting in college, actually. So so that I guess, yeah, something behind the scenes with TV producing, either wrestling or any type of show. So that's what I'm studying now. And, you know, I work in TV now. So definitely just more into it. Okay. And are you somebody who believe wrestlers can stick, like, there's the whole thing with John Cena, that John Cena was always a face and he's never really changed much and everybody's like, oh my God, John Cena, okay, turn, change something. Are you a fan of wrestlers who kind of want to keep to what got them their core fan base? Are you somebody who's like, it's okay, like how Chris Jericho is able to kind of reinvent himself every so mm -hmm. often. He has like a totally new gimmick and it's something different from before. What are your thoughts on wrestlers and, you know, their gimmicks? Um, I mean, it depends on everybody. Like, John Cena, it works for him. I would have loved to see the heel turn, but at this <laughs> point, you know, I've always liked him. So, you know, it really just depends on the person. Um, you know, if you are tired of what you're doing, then you should switch it up. And, you know, because if you're tired of it, then people are going to get tired of it, too. So, yeah. you know, it's really up to the person. Like, I think for Cena, it worked for him. 
you know, even though I would have loved to see it at the same time, but you know, it always works for him. And I felt like he never really got stale, you know, and a lot of people probably disagree because they're tired of <laughs> and all that stuff, but you know, he made it work. And so it's really up to you, but. And are you a believer that a wrestler can only be as good as they make skills? Are you somebody like, well, if you throw a good manager or a good mouthpiece, they're fine. Or are you like, you have to kind of have some type of mic skills to be memorable. What are your thoughts on wrestlers who have great mic skills and then ones who usually need some kind of mouthpiece? Um, I don't think it necessarily hinders, you know, I mean, it really does help if you can have a good promo. Cause like there might not always be a chance for you to have a manager. You might have to cut something on your own. So it's always good to help. But then you look at somebody like Brock Lesnar, who never, you know, always had Paul Heyman and he's one of the top guys in the world, you know, and his mic skills aren't that great. Even though, even if you sit him down and like do like a pre recorded thing, like he could nail some stuff. But, um, you know, I mean, it really depends. But I think, you know, the more, if you, I would say you work on your mic skills, the more, the more you have, the better, the more you could offer somebody, the better chance it is for you. So. Okay. I love that answer. I agree. <laughs> and what are your thoughts? Because um, I, I, the whole thing with like Sonya Deville, kind of like I'm somebody who like obsessive about the ID channel, so I always uh, overly paranoid about most people anyway. So mm -hmm. I'm just like I always feel like there's some really creepy guy just waiting to do something really weird. So I was trying to explain to people that this is probably why a lot of celebrities do not want. Like after a while, it's like don't stand in front of the hotel, don't like wait 20 years to see them. What are your thoughts on what I would I mean? Some people call them stands. I don't know how I feel about that, but like the super fans who are not like they love you because they love you, it's because they're like love you, but they're also borderline stalker stalkers. What yeah. are your thoughts on their super fans? Like, and what would you say things they if they need a tweak to probably like you can be a fan of somebody without being like that crazy fan? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, some fans just take it way too far. Like, that's when your Deville thing is, like, scary. And, you know, I I mean, I was, like, a, you know, a big fan, too, before I got into it. And I loved meeting wrestlers, but I'm not going to go stand out in front of somebody's hotel room. I'm not going to look up the flights of the air. You know, that's what, like, some fans do. It's like, okay, I know this wrestler lives in Florida and the show's in, you know, New Jersey. So I'm going to look up Florida flights to figure out what time they're going to be there. Like, that's just too much work. You know, if you happen to be at an airport and you're, like, getting on a flight yourself and you just happen to run into somebody, of course you would love to say hi and take a picture. But like the one, I don't get, you know, you know, stoking out the airports and stuff like that. I mean, I get you want to meet your favorite people. You want to support them, but it's a little too much when you're going out of your way. And, you know, they, they need a break too. Like, you know, they're on the road. They don't really have any privacy. Like let them breathe a little bit. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I never really agreed with like that it that far like i said if you happen to run into somebody you know nothing wrong but if you're going out of your way to find out where they're staying what airline they're on that's a bit much for me yeah i i definitely agree with that i feel like there's a level like i would like i dream about the crazy about the hardy boys like i had to apologize to her recently like mom i am so sorry that you probably was like katrina top <laughs> And yeah, I was like so like obsessive about you know, like the parties. And then I finally went to the party like two years ago. And like even it was like a couple of minutes. And I like had a whole like mouth on like, oh my god, he's like sitting right there. But even then, when I was hearing people so they were waiting like afterwards to like to see him leave, and I was just like, All right, I love him probably more than most people, and I'm yeah. not gonna sit in the parking lot hoping to catch him leave. Like that's a bit much. Yeah. I'm sure like he didn't seem quite a few people today. He wants to get home or whatever it is that he needs to do. And you guys are like, I guess, I feel like it's just intruding. It's like a personal space thing. Like, okay, these guys mm -hmm. have a personal time. Like, it's not like a, yeah. it shouldn't be to that extent. So, I don't know. That's always oh, very strange to me with people. Like, some people were justifying that. And I'm like, there's no way to justify somebody breaking into somebody's house. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I can't what, try yeah. to understand that logic. And then like now I'm hearing, like, I see a lot of, like, um a lot of the top women, they're getting, like, mail to their house. And, like, it's not like, you know, they put, like, an address out there. It's, you know, like these fans like googling their addresses and stuff. It's scary too. It's you know, leave it alone. If you if they don't put that information publicly, then you should not be googling it. Definitely agree with that. What would you say is like one of the highlights of your wrestling career? Like something you was just super proud of to do? Um, I don't, um, I would say probably like you know winning the few titles that I've had. That's always an honor. Like the promotion feels that I represent their company well and wanted me to be their representation. So I always treasure that. You know, I know somebody like you know it's a prop, it's this and that, but you know it's 
the, the promotion feels that you represent them well. So I always will appreciate any title that I've ever won. Um, getting to do extra work with WWE for WrestleMania weekend was always great too, just because, you know, you grow up a fan, you get, you know, you watch WrestleMania as a kid and now getting to see it like behind the scenes mm -hmm. was amazing. It was like a dream come true. So grateful for that opportunity as well. Okay. I like that. What are your thoughts on when like, there's the, again, the weird fans who like take wrestling too seriously to the point where it's like they live and breathe it to the point where it gets kind of like, all right, chill. And then there's the ones that's like, oh my God, how can you watch wrestling? So what are your thoughts on fans who think like wrestling is totally, because, you know, of course there's slightly scripted, but wrestlers still have to put their bodies on the line. They still have to train. They still have to travel. They can still very well be injured. What are your thoughts on people who's like, oh, but just because the storyline is scripted, wrestling is totally fake. And as if people are faking injuries or people are faking getting hurt, what are your thoughts on people who have that like notion that oh my god, everything you guys do is just totally fake and just no unnecessary? Um, well, it's like you said, it's not. You know, we train just as much as any other sport. You know, we're athletes just as much. We have to put in as much effort. You have to know what you're doing to make sure that you or your opponent does not get hurt. And, you know, some people are just going to hate it just because they want to hate it. Like, oh, it's fake. The storylines is cheesy. And if that's your opinion, that's fine. But, you know, at least understand that we train like it's a sport, you know, like any other sport. And we put in just as much gym time, training, everything else, just like everybody else. So, you know, they're not going to want to see it if they don't want to. But Okay. What is um something in your career that you haven't done yet that you really want to do? That it's a goal you want to check off your list? Um, I would say wrestle different play like wrestle on the West Coast is like a big goal and an international. That's like the big goal. Like wrestle like UK somewhere. Just I just want to get out there. <laughs> <laughs> and could you see yourself wrestling in like a place like Japan where wrestling is very vastly different than American wrestling? Um, I would love to at some point. It would be just, you know, like you said, it's so different out there. And like I've started watching Japanese wrestling the past couple of years and you know, it's amazing. Like, they're so talented. So at some point, I would look like, I don't feel ready for it yet. But hopefully, <laughs> one day I can go out there and work some of those girls. You know, they're so talented out there. Yeah, I got introduced to New Japan last year, I think. Like, G1 mm -hmm. was my first introduction to Japanese wrestling. And I was like, so where was I all this time beforehand that I didn't know this existed? Mm -hmm. But I was so entertained by it. And I was like, it wasn't even or the top, like, storylines or anything. It was just like they were so good. And I was yeah. like, like this is amazing. Like, how did I not know? I've watched wrestling for so long and never knew nothing about New Japan or Japanese wrestling. So I had to, like, kind of like binge watch some Japanese wrestling to kind of mm -hmm. be like, okay, I really like love this. This is like, now it's like New Japan's like my favorite promotion be off of the fact that I watched it last year at, at G1 and I was just so amazed by everything. I was just like, oh my God, this is so freaking dope. This is so amazing. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is some, like, where do you see yourself in like five years from now? Like if you can like cherry pick or like plan out your career in five years, what would you see yourself doing? Um, Hopefully wrestling full time, just traveling all over. I don't know. I don't know if I necessarily see myself with like a contract or something like that. If that works out for me, great. You know, it's not like the main goal or something that I need, but I just hope yeah, I'm wrestling every week all over, just getting my name out there and just nonstop wrestling. Okay. So this is like my last question for you. What is uh is there anything you wanted to promote? Anything you wanted to get out there that you'd come have coming up? Is there anything you want to shout out? Okay. Um, well, unfortunately, just with COVID, I don't really have any shows coming up yet, but hopefully I'll be back before the year is over. That's, I guess, a small goal. Um, you know, if anybody wants to follow me on social media, I have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Ariella Nix. Um, if you want to support, buy some merch, my website is ariellanix.bigcartel.com. I got my new shirt on. Can't really see it too much, but, you know, that's great today <laughs> um so yeah i have a couple of shirts and eight by tens pins a couple of things on there so if you guys ever want to support appreciate you guys and that's about it <laughs> okay well listeners i will have all those links in the description box so you guys can get to click in get to buying get to supporting thank you so much ariella for uh chatting with me today this is a really fun interview like oh, i said i was so very great. fortunate to see you live uh, oh, <laughs> so, so i hope so i need a show i'm like 
But like right. I panic right now, like okay, I need a show, like a fix. So I yeah. <laughs> I hope so, like hopefully before 2021, if you know right. the universe is willing. But um, so I've personally got to see Ariella live and she's mad dope. So you know, get um. to start like <laughs> typing in some matches. I guarantee you're gonna find something you like because I love her matches. And oh. thank you so much for uh joining me today. I'm so grateful oh, that thank you. you. Thank so, you. Pleasure <laughs> trying. So, so bye guys. I will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.